Hi, this is Swapnil Bharti and we are here at Dock and Con in San Francisco and today we have with us Wendy uh, from VMware. Uh, before we kind of start talking about all the technology stuff, can you tell us a bit about yourself? What do you do at VMware? Sure. So I run product marketing for cloud native apps and essentially I work with customers, I work with partners and um, really take uh, their input and incorporate their feedback into our product portfolio. So you get feedback from the customers and then, you, so you kind of work as a bridge between. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right. really uh, understanding what their challenges are and um, you know, taking that back into um, our product teams and uh, making sure that they understand what the customers are facing and making sure that you know, they have um, the, the feedback they need in order to design better products to serve our customers. Yeah, because if you look at VMware, you, know, uh, you are the guys you know, who brought the whole you know, virtual machine kind of you know, uh, movement or revolution, whatever way you call it. And now we are living in the age of containerizations and uh, Kubernetes is, everybody's talking about Kubernetes. Yes. <laughs> so, and I think uh, VMware has a pro you know, product as well as project around Kubernetes and containerizations as well, which is called PKS, I guess? Yes, uh, yes. Pivotal. Container service, yeah, Pivotal uh, Container Service, yeah. PKS. Uh -huh. so, so I wrote about it earlier, but uh, anything new that is happening these days in terms of PKS? Yeah, yeah, lots of things. Uh, so we announced PKS last year at VMworld, mm -hmm. and it's a jointly developed product between Pivotal and VMware in collaboration with Google. And um, you know, since we announced the uh, product last year, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback, a good traction with customers on um, you know the uh, challenges that they're facing uh, with deploying Kubernetes, putting it into production, and operationalizing it 24 by 7. And uh, through that feedback process, um, you know, we really focused on how to address those types of challenges with PKS, really mm -hmm. focusing on how to make Kubernetes easy right. for our customers to deploy and operationalize. So, um, you know, we introduced this concept of constant compatibility, which is essentially a way for uh, our customers to receive the latest innovations from the Kubernetes community. So we are committed to delivering the latest uh, release that is on GKE, mm -hmm. uh, that runs on GKE, and so we call that constant compatibility. And uh, when we released uh, PKS, um, it supported uh, 1.9 right out the gate. And um, you know, we're really excited about um, the fact that we could bring that latest you know, innovation to our customers. And that's fully supported by VMware and Pivotal as well. Um, other feedback we heard from customers are very similar to some of the user surveys that we saw from CNCF, which is um, you know, securing mm -hmm. uh, containers, uh, logging, monitoring, networking, storage. Uh, we heard very similar challenges from our customers as well. And what they're looking for is really a product that packages all these um, you know, uh, capabilities in one package for them to easily install and deploy uh, in their environment. So that's essentially what PKS um, delivered to our customers, which is a set of uh, functionalities with networking uh, through NSXT that's embedded into the product, includes a uh, container registry, which you know, addresses some of their concerns, uh, concerns around security with vulnerability scanning. And um, you know, we, we added Kubernetes and Bosch to address some of the lifecycle management, high availability, cluster management uh, needs that they have. And um, we just started shipping uh, PKS uh, in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some tech preview period late last year. And um, you know, it's, it's been a great uh, journey for us in terms of taking this uh, product to our customers, getting the feedback, and um, you know, really looking at how to address some of these pain points uh, head on. Yeah, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Kubernetes, uh, the Cloud Foundry is you know, one of the gems that came out of you know, Pivotal or VMware. I mean, it's the big you know, giant you know, <laughs> kind of, you know. Uh, so uh, it's uh, CFCR, which used to be Kubo, mm -hmm. where we you know right. you brought Kubernetes and Bosch together. Does that also play any role in, in PKS? Absolutely, yeah. So um, PKS consists of Kubernetes on Bosch, mm -hmm. and that used to be uh, you know, Kubo mm -hmm. uh, in the Cloud Foundry um, community. And it was recently renamed to CFCR. Cloud Foundry, mm -hmm. exactly, Container Runtime. So CFCR is a, a core component of PKS, and uh, that's included as part of the product that we offer. And um, it's been you know, really um, instrumental in helping our customers address uh, some of the lifecycle management issues for, for Kubernetes. Right. Um, so through Bosch, for example, 
um, our customers are able to, um, you know, essentially address uh, some of the HA capabilities. It has, um, you know, health checking mechanisms built in and uh, it will automatically bring up VMs uh, when the uh, Kubernetes cluster is needed and um, you know, it just has a lot of automated uh, capabilities built in that you know, customers don't really have to worry about. Right, uh, you said that the, the PKS was announced a lot at the VM world, VMware world. Uh, so when is the next, you know, what is the cadence of PKS? and yeah. what should we expect from the next, because Kubernetes moves at a very fast pace. Very fast pace, yeah, yeah exactly. So um, we uh, plan to uh, release PKS uh, when new versions of Kubernetes uh, come out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're definitely um, looking forward to keeping up with uh, delivering that um, latest release with constant compatibility uh, to our customers. So um, the next version will have the latest version of uh, Kubernetes and uh, we're also um, adding more enhancements uh, around security uh, for our customers, um, really enhancing some of the networking capabilities as well, um, and adding more flexible topology support, and um, you know also looking at integrating more VMware uh, tools so that our customers can better manage um, their uh, Kubernetes clusters. So. A couple of examples include uh, Wavefront, mm -hmm. and uh, what we did was work with a Wavefront team and uh, be able to really make it seamless for customers to be able to use Wavefront to monitor Kubernetes clusters and the applications that they're running in their clusters with real-time um, statistics for them to actually you know, see what's going on um, and get a lot of analytics around that so they could use Wavefront uh, to do that. And uh, we also work with a vRealize team. Um, mm -hmm. They have a product called vRealize uh, Log Insight. And uh, it has tremendous amount of um, you know, really powerful logging capabilities where customers can um, use tagging and aggregation uh, to collect that log information and be able to present it to um, operators who are managing the clusters uh, to give them really deep dive uh, analysis what's going on in their clusters. So there will be more integration uh, with uh, VMware uh, products um, so that customers can use uh, those tools uh, in their environment for Kubernetes as well. When, when is the you know, release coming out? You know? The next release coming out is PKS 1.1 mm -hmm. and uh, it will have support for the latest Kubernetes version which is Kubernetes 1.10. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, delivering to that constant compatibility uh, promise to our customers and enabling our customers to leverage the latest innovation from the Kubernetes community. We're also incorporating more VMware uh, support around uh, monitoring and, and logging. So um, two of the things that we're adding is uh, Wavefront integration, where it's a really a seamless experience for our customers to use Wavefront and uh, click on the PKS tile essentially and have a fully automated experience that they could instantly manage their Kubernetes clusters mm -hmm. and the applications running. Uh, in those clusters and be able to get real-time uh, statistics on um, you know, what's going on in, in those clusters. The second tool that we're in incorporating is vRealize Log right. Insight, and that essentially allows our customers to use aggregation, tagging, to get some really deep dive uh, kind of um, analysis uh, through vRealize Log Insight into their Kubernetes clusters as well. Yeah, so uh, as you integrate these components, is it based on the customer feedback? or is it based on VMware's own requirement to move to the new market? What is the driving yeah, force, number yeah. one? And second is that, uh, what are the pain points that you see from the customer? Mm -hmm. You can separate these two questions, or if it makes sense, we can. Yeah, so um, it's the def def definitely based on customer feedback. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and this, these feedback are essentially, you know, things around container security, uh, better connectivity, um, mm. you know, addressing the operational needs of how do I monitor this, how do I keep it running 24 by mm -hmm. 7. Uh, many customers have developer teams all across the world and um, they definitely want to make sure that it's running uh, around the clock. Mm -hmm. So um, they have a, a team of people who are dedicated to ensuring that their developers have the best productivity experience so that they ensure that um, these Kubernetes clusters are up and running you know, for them at, at all times. So it's definitely based on a lot of customer input. And um, pain point is um, usually around the actual experience of, of deploying Kubernetes right. and making it easy for them. And you know, frequently what we see is that in an enterprise there are multiple teams um, that are responsible for different parts of 
um, the, the infrastructure and um, you know not only the, the VMware aspect of it, but also the um, you know dev development and uh, you know the um, DevOps aspect of it. And the operations is sometimes it's a whole different team as well. So it's really important to make sure that each team's needs are being met and that they have different pain points uh, around security, compliance, um, governance, um, monitoring, logging, all these are different pain points that each different group faces. So um, we're definitely very you know, well in touch with um, all the different groups that need to be successful and uh, really listening to what they need, not only today, but what they um, are looking for in the future as well. You know, six right. months you know, later, they're already projecting, you know, I'm going to need this, right? Yes. I'm going to increase the number of pods I run from this number to this bigger number, so therefore I'm going to need that. Um, you know, we're going to run microservices, so can you help us with a roadmap to enable microservices? They're already bringing up requirements such as Istio, for example, mm -hmm. for service mesh. So, um, you know, all those requirements are coming into VMware and, you know, we're really working closely with Pivotal as well to look at how to address um, the pain points today, as well as what they uh, need for the future, and incorporating that into a roadmap and jointly developing towards that roadmap so that our customers um, essentially will have what they need, you know, not only today, but also you know, in the future as well. And it's really about intersecting their needs with our development roadmap. Yeah, and things are changing so fast that six months looks like, you know. It's eternity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and since you're talking about future and new things uh, these days, you know, new, uh, Buzzwords keep popping up on weekly basis. So serverless, you know, is uh, one of the new yeah. buzzwords. So when you do talk about, you know, future proofing as well as uh, customer feedback, I recall that six months ago we were debating what is serverless and now there are use cases that people are using in production. So from VMware's perspective, what is your, you know, strategy or plan for serverless computing? So uh, we're doing a lot in uh, various open source communities today, mm -hmm. and um, you know it's a great way for us to engage with the community. Um, you know, not only from a user perspective, but also from different vendors' perspective, mm -hmm. and where uh, people see you know in terms of what are the use cases and what are some of the higher priority pain points that the community should focus on. So um, through projects like this patch, uh, which is an open source serverless project that VMware um, introduced, and through OpenFast which is also something that you know, VMware's open source office is, is driving. Um, we're engaging with the community mm -hmm. to um, you know, kind of listen to the feedback and the use cases. And uh, for customers who are already running serverless in production, uh, we're getting a better understanding of what are those pain points. And are these use cases something that other enterprises can leverage as well? Is it something that you know, many enterprises out there can leverage for perhaps you know, different types of business? Right. So um, we're definitely engaged uh, from that um, level, and um, we are also having some conversations with customers who are, you know, more advanced, and you know, they've already formulated their thinking around serverless to look at how serverless can be deployed on PKS, for example. So um, we're definitely, uh, you know, working through multiple communities that way. So our customer community the open source community as well as working with Pivotal mm -hmm. jointly and uh, formulating um, that serverless um, architecture right. um, that you know we could deliver to the market. Right. And since we're talking about buzzwords and future, <laughs> yeah. and uh, machine learning workloads yeah, and yes. uh, Kubernetes, you know, Kubeflow is there. So uh, what's uh, going on in that space? Yeah, we hear a lot about uh, machine learning as um, definitely some companies are uh, further ahead than other companies. Mm -hmm. Um, so we see a variety of customers who are asking us ab about machine learning, and, and the questions range from what is machine learning exactly. to um, you know how would I how would I use machine learning in my business and mm -hmm. what can I do for my business mm -hmm. to customers who have already played with some form of machine learning already and or attended talks by other companies and they're very inspired by the potential of serverless and uh, the potential of machine learning and they're very excited by it. Right. So, um, so we have a very broad range of conversations with our customers today, and I think that um, the, um, I mean, on VMware's part, we're still evaluating uh, how can we enable the, the mass market with right. machine learning mm -hmm. and make it easy uh, for our customers. So, uh, but you know, we're definitely uh, engaged on a machine learning um, conversation, you know, with our customers, with different communities as well. And like you said, these buzzwords are popping up everywhere. Yeah, and so. 
I think there's a lot of curiosity mm -hmm. uh, for enterprises to learn about it, mm -hmm. and also to think about how they can incorporate it into their environment mm -hmm. and drive business outcome mm -hmm. you know, from it. Right. And uh, uh, since you also work you know, in the customer feedback kind of area, Personally, what are the areas that you, int you interest you? And you're like, oh, this is the area which you know is kind of you know a lot of yeah. things are happening in this space. You know, a lot of you know communities active. Yeah, I'm interested in uh, areas that help our customers drive um, mm -hmm. higher productivity. Mm -hmm. So um, that includes uh, a lot of different things that you know we we just kind of touched on as mm -hmm. well. Um, but it's really about for me, you know, also helping our customers adopt those technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, while these technologies are all very exciting, mm -hmm. I think bringing it into an enterprise mm -hmm. is a whole different challenge that requires mm -hmm. um, you know training. It requires um, operational modeling. Mm -hmm. You know, it requires workflows. So I think there are a lot of um, organizational issues as well um, that I think you know we put a lot of thought into in terms of you know we have this great technology that's happening in various open source communities, but how do we in enable our customers to actually leverage those technology in a production environment right. with their staff trained and be able to run and support it you right. know 24 by 7? So I think that's another angle of the challenge that I'm personally very interested in. Uh, I love the technologies, and there's a lot of new, exciting things coming, and I, and you know, I try to tune into all of them. But it's really then about okay, then how do we take all this and then make it real for the enterprise and deliver business outcomes for them? And and that's a whole set of challenge that I'm looking into and following and uh, understanding better in terms of you know how to really you know enable these open source innovations uh, in a production capacity. Yeah, because technology itself is of no use unless and until it's helping somebody in one way or the other, so. You have to be able to production. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. you have to be able to run it in production. Um, right. So we talked, about, uh, we talked about Kubernetes, we talked about PKS, we talked about containers and everything. Let's talk about you for a while okay. now. <laughs> so, so when you are not doing all this tech stuff, what do you do in your free time? What's your hobbies? Uh, I love to run, uh -huh. uh, I play tennis, mm -hmm. uh, I love to hike. And uh, I volunteer um, with um, different organizations uh, when I have time. And uh, I love to read. I think I'm normal, average, you know, person just like everybody else. So, what kind of organization do you volunteer for? Uh, I volunteer with uh, Stanford, and they have a, um, a program called Seed, and it's essentially um, a program that helps emerging countries um, from you know offering uh, pro bono consulting around uh, business models to. Um, you know, marketing to how to reach their audience, um, you know, helping them create business plans uh, to be successful, how to leverage technologies. So there's a huge need for um, people who, you know, understand the business and the technology aspects to help, uh, you know, smaller businesses in emerging countries to be successful. Mm -hmm. So um, I volunteer with uh, that organization and uh, have worked with um, businesses in, in Africa, for example, which is where they tend to focus on and um, you know it's just really fascinating uh, for me to understand um, you know the, the the innovation and the creativity that's happening in those countries and people beginning to you know really leverage technologies to um, you know run their um, business uh, as well and they have a whole different set of challenges uh, from the infrastructure to um, you know just the, um, the literacy levels in some countries uh, so it's a very fascinating um, way for me to engage with a whole different world of people who, you know, I think could definitely use, um, you know, a lot of the talent and expertise that, that we have in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and um, help them, you know, change the way they run business and change their lives, you know, at the end of the day. So it's, it's fun for me. So do you like travel there and meet the... the no, the it's all virtual. Yeah, oh, it's, it's all, all oh. virtual, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And have you had any experience, you know, that, oh, there is uh, this company or this individual is doing, you know, this is exciting thing, but they are restricted by the technology or have you came across any exciting use, you know, cases where like, yeah, oh, you're like so amazed? Yeah, so I worked with um, one uh, school in uh -huh. Ghana uh -huh. and um, they are trying to figure out how to keep kids in school because what happens in Ghana is that um, the uh, utility is not uh, very well regulated. So um, the electricity, for example, um, the, the cost of electricity could spike in mm -hmm. any given month. Okay. And it's, it's really unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So when the electricity prices spike, 
um, the, the families tend to take their kids out of school. Mm -hmm. And the school can't afford to run their school because it gets very expensive. So um, they launched a program through Stanford to find out more about um, how, how they could essentially better manage the situation mm -hmm. and um, how they could uh, reach out to more parents and keep their kids in school okay. mm -hmm. and how to address the problems of um, you know unpredictable cost mm -hmm. in uh, running the infrastructure for the school so I worked with that school and you know we came up with a lot of different ideas um, you know in terms of how to uh, you know that one of the things that mentioned is that you know most people have mobile phone yeah, almost yeah, everybody yeah. so uh, we talked about how to um, you know reach their right. uh, audience um, through uh, mobile, mm -hmm. uh, advertising, promotion, uh, social media, um, and what are some of the messages messages that they could potentially leverage to keep their to keep the families and keep their kids in school. Uh, we also talked about fundraising. Mm -hmm. So I gave them a variety of different ways that they could potentially use, um, you know, crowdsourcing to do some fundraising. So there were a lot of ideas that were exchanged, and um, you know I think um, you know they they were very enthusiastic about some of the ideas, and we worked together on implementing some of them. So you know so far you know we're seeing some good results. So yeah, you know, it's pretty average, I guess. No, it's, 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 no, it's a lot it's, of fun, doing something and it's with good your to life, understand. Yeah, it's just really incredible. Yeah. So, so do you bring some of this to uh, to VMware to say let's start an innovation center at VMware to help these? VMware has a huge foundation, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and just thousands of employees volunteer through different charities. Okay, um, and it's a it's a quite robust uh, foundation. It's very very what active. What is it called? Uh, a VMware Foundation. Okay. And uh, employees volunteer. Um, you know, we just did a volunteer event in my office not too long ago, uh, where you know we we packaged um, you know things for uh, for for different charity as. And uh, you know it's two three hours, but it was you know a lot of fun for um, the team to come t come together and do something that you know it's it's goodwill and it's for charity. Yeah. So we do quite a bit of that actually at VMware as well. So um, it's really a culture of giving back, and uh, a lot of employees participate in it. Um, so you know it's it's something that you know I think everyone should uh, should, should do, do and yes. be a part of the community either here locally or abroad, you know, um, because there are just so much need out there and we could all do some good with, you know, just a few hours of our time. Awesome, and yeah. I did not even know about these engagements, so it's always nice to, to talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to talk. I think we're all talking about work and technology most of the time at these conferences, yeah. so this is really unusual to talk about personal interest. Yeah, and I, and I because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm also a fiction writer, so oh, I do, wonderful. I do like to uh, to talk about you know, uh, you know, because we are humans first, you know. Yeah. Even with the technology we are building is for people. So if there is no people, what is the point of technology itself? So it's I, I always love Absolutely. to hear these That's stories, right. you know, because we are obviously each of you are doing so many incredible things in your personal life, but we never get to hear those stories. So I like to talk about that. So thanks, Wendy, thank talking so to me today. I really I appreciate it. it. Yeah. Yes, nice thank to you. Talk to you as well. okay. We'll see you again at the next open source conference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.